ants. Everybody seems to, to hate ants getting in the hives and, and they seem to be more of a nuisance for beekeepers really than to bees. We hate them, we think the bees must hate them, but the bees probably don't notice them a whole lot. They're small enough, they sneak in through any crack and crevice. They probably do eat a little bit of honey, but not enough to really matter. But uh, the danger is that they would track in something else because ants constantly share food. And if you're over here spraying ants in your yard with a poison that's slow acting, which is what you use for ants, so they track it back to their nest, and some of them are moving into your beehive, they may actually uh, move, move that in. And I actually killed an observation hive one time uh, by treating for ants in a different room. They sometimes get up in the lids, they'll make nests in there, or if you have a, a wooden lid that has sheet metal over the top, there may be a space in there, sometimes they, they nest in that. Um, some people use Tanglefoot, this is like sticky goo, it's like duct tape without the tape, it's, it's amazingly sticky, but you can put it on the legs of your, your hive stand and as ants walk up they get stuck and then another ant walks up and gets stuck and soon you have a thousand ants and then they're stuck all over it and the next ant just walks right across their still living sisters that are stuck to the goo. So that's something you would have to clean up and reapply quite a bit. Uh, more effective is probably ant moats and to use these it really depends on what your hives are sitting on, your hive stand, uh, so you can, you can incorporate them into a hive stand or put them directly underneath beehives, but because ants can't fly, they have to walk everywhere they're going, and so you put oil or water in here and then ants can't make it up across that. Uh, some of them have a little, uh, little, little roof so that when it rains, you have oil in there, then it, it won't wash all the oil out. If you just put water in there, then it, will, it may evaporate. So um, some of these are, will take care of that. Um, you know, you can just put the leg of your hive stand in, in water or oil, soup cans. That's a great hive stand there, isn't it? And, uh, you know, that can work temporarily. Uh, one thing you hear a lot of people say is cinnamon will repel the ants. Well, that's very temporary. So if, if you... Uh, you stick a cinnamon stick underneath each corner of your hives, that's going to last and maybe until it rains. But it might be a temporary solution with some nukes if, if you don't have uh, anything else out there. There's all kinds of spiders and insects and, and other things that love to eat honeybees. Honeybees are plentiful and they are probably quite delicious and nutritious if, if that's what you like. So. Uh, you know, praying mantids eat a lot of bad bugs, but they eat pollinators and other good things. Spiders, there are a lot of spiders that hide in flowers, and they actually are colored to uh, match the flowers they hide in, and they wait for a little bee or a fly to land, and they pounce right on it. So it's just one of the dangers of, of being a foraging bee, and that's why a lot of bees don't make it back. Yellow jackets and wasps, and this is a, a robber fly. They just swoop down and grab their prey out of the air. Dragonflies do the same thing. Um, most of these are, are pretty insignificant. If you have a lot of wasps or, or yellow jackets or, or hornets around, then you can get these uh, baited traps that will attract them in. Just hang them up from trees away from your beehives and, and attract them away. And of course, uh, the last couple of years, we've heard all about murder hornets, right? Death from the sky. Not a problem here. They found them way over in Washington state, but every, every spring and summer, I get reports of people who know they found murder hornets in Arkansas because they see European hornets for the first time and they're sure that's what it is. Later in the summer, they see cicada killer wasps and they're sure that's what it is, but we don't have them here uh, despite the fact that you identified them off of the internet. So we don't need to worry about that yet. If we do, we will put out a press release. You'll be the first to know. Talked about mice last time, putting in mouse guards. So we, we know what mice do when they get into a beehive. We also know what bees do when mice get into a, a beehive. So put those mouse guards on before it gets cold enough that bees will cluster. And uh, that just keeps them out of the hive and, and solves a lot of problems. Or you can just spread some tender vittles around and, and let nature take its course. So get a, I don't know how they can catch a, a mouse with a, a bee hat on there, but. I just saw that and I thought that was adorable. But I have cats and dogs. They run around in the backyard, all around the, the beehives. 
And uh, most of them, most pets learn very quickly to stay away from beehives. Although I did have one dog who did not learn. You'd see him out in the backyard snapping. He was trying to catch bees in his mouth. I kept thinking he's going to catch one and he's going to learn, but he would never learn. So he either never caught one or, or he, he didn't, didn't think it was that bad. I don't know. Skunks, however, can be a big problem for, for beekeepers, for beehives. Uh, they like to eat bees and they come up at night, they will scratch at the entrance of a hive and they create a little bit of noise there and the bees on guard duty come out to see what is going on and the skunk eats them. And skunks have figured out that you only eat the front half of a bee and you leave the, the stinger, the pointy end, and so sometimes you see piles of bee abdomens and the rest of the bee is gone. But uh, apparently they're really easy to get rid of. You're supposed to just grab them by the tail. <laughs> And then you swing them around a couple of times and, and toss them into the bushes. So that's what I heard. I haven't had a chance to try that yet, but that, that's what... I have a cousin who works for the Game and Fish Commission. He told me that that's definitely the way I want to do it, so I'll let you know. People try to build all kinds of chicken wire contraptions and things like that to keep critters away from the entrance of the hive, but that's probably more trouble for the beekeeper than, than anything else. Um, this just looks dangerous. I don't know. <laughs> I'm too clumsy. I would I would trip and fall on that. And you know, uh, some people try to move the entrance to the top of the hive rather than the bottom, uh, but that's going to be kind of temporary. That's also backwards from what bees typically want, so that's not recommended. But best thing is to raise your hives further up off the ground. Skunks do not like to stretch really high and expose their tender underbellies to uh, be able to get a meal. I don't know if you can see it, but there's very large nails driven all through the, the front of this piece of wood here. And you can top that off by going to your home center and get a carpet tack strip. They go around the edge of the room to, to stretch the carpets on. Just cut a piece and put right there. The bees will walk right out and uh, not bother them. But anything with little paws up there will get a uh, big steel spike in their, their paw. Of course, some clumsy bee is probably going to be flying in and impale themselves at one point, but that's, that's probably not going to be too often. So, yeah, elevate your hives and get them away from critters on the ground. Um, I didn't have raccoons in here, but sometimes raccoons, if you have an entrance feeder on your hive, raccoons will knock that jar off and then they'll lap up the syrup that dribbles out of it wait for you to refill it and put it back again tomorrow. So if you ever have a problem with that, you don't know why your, your entrance feeder keeps getting knocked down, it's either neighborhood kids with a slingshot or it's raccoons. So switch to some kind of inside feeder. That usually takes care of that. How many of y'all have bears in your neighborhood? A few. Probably more than you know. Remember this story from a couple years ago? One came right up here into Little Rock, so they can be around. But um, this is the natural state, and we do have a good population of black bears here. Black, black bears are very territorial and curious. They tend to follow the same route as they wander through their, their territory, and they follow ravines and creeks, but they also follow tree lines. So they, they can walk easily through the edge of the, the pasture, the meadow, but they can dart back into the trees if, if they get scared. Where do people who have a lot of land put their beehives? At the edge of the pasture, right? They're against the tree line, so it's out of the way. You can mow, you can do everything, but you can see them there. And so if, uh, if you have bears in your territory and then you put basically big picnic baskets out there, they're going to wander along and they're going to see what that is. And if they get a meal, they're going to come back. They learn very quickly. Despite what you've been told by some bears, it's not necessarily the honey that these bears are after. Bears like protein, especially bears get, trying to fatten up for winter. And mama bears coming out of winter that have cubs that they're still trying to feed and teach how to eat, they like protein too. So this is the teddy bear's picnic here. They will destroy everything. They actually drag frames away from the hive a lot of times so that they don't have to bother with the bees. But they like to eat the bee brood. They'll eat the honey too. But what they don't eat, they just step on. But if they get a good meal, then a lot of times they will come back. People try all kinds of things, noisemakers, lights, um, 
they strap their hives down, and concrete pads, and you know, a bear might tip it over, sniff around. If they don't get anything to eat, they might satisfy their curiosity and, and they won't come back and bother them again. You can set them back up. But that little nylon strap is not going to deter a bear who can completely destroy a tree like that. So you can try bear boards again. You'd have to have really big ones that went all the way around your hives. That would be kind of, kind of cumbersome, I think. But electric fences seem to be the, the go-to standard if you really have bear problems. And uh, you've got to put them upright. They've got to be grounded. They've got to have the right current. And the wires have to be at correctly spaced. Otherwise, bears can get right in. If they're not touching the hot wire and one foot on the ground, or if the ground's too dry, or it's too rocky, it doesn't, doesn't always work right. Plus, you need to uh, charge that. If you're, so usually they need solar, solar power. And what you really want to do is entice that bear into touching that hot wire before anything else. So you can, you can wrap a piece of rancid bacon around. It doesn't matter how old and nasty it is, that's where that bear's nose is going to go first. If you just dangle it like that, a crow will take off with it, but wrap it around really good and they're going to come and try to taste that right off or sniff at it. And if they get a zap, Hopefully that will deter them. Or maybe your bears are on a kosher diet. You can use cans of uh, sardines or tuna fish and uh, just come back and, and replace them periodically as needed. But you can wire that whole can, electrify the whole thing. And uh, if they can get one good zap, then hopefully they'll, they'll learn very quickly. I have a, a friend in New Jersey that apparently they have a lot of bears out there. And she told me that where she has one bee yard, uh, she put up an electric fence. She's the one who taught me about electric fences anyway. And uh, she said her neighbor who owned the property there was sitting on his, his porch one day watching a bear come out of the woods, came over there and sniffed around and touched that electric fence and took off running and completely flattened a big panel fence. So hopefully they run in the opposite direction and not right through all of your beehives. There is another method of taking care of bears that it can be very effective, and we do have a season for that, so if, if that's your thing. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, and you do have nuisance bears around, uh, the Game and Fish will trap and relocate bears. Uh, they have a, a very good sense of direction, and they can often find their way back if they're not moved far enough, but they do give them, I think, two, two three strikes before they, they will finally have to put them down if they have lost all fear of people. Finally, elephants. Any of y'all have elephant problems? No? You know, we, have, we used to have an elephant sanctuary up in uh, Quitman, and I think uh, one time an elephant got out and they had to hunt it down, but uh, I saw this photo and I thought that would be an interesting problem to have. And of course, there are places in the world where elephants are actually big farm pests. You know, that's where people are encroaching into elephant habitat. When you're an elephant, the world is pretty much your dinner plate, probably. And the only difference between walking through the forest grazing and going through a cornfield is that the cornfield is probably much easier to eat. What they don't eat, they step on, and so obviously this causes a lot of problems for farmers in, in Africa and India. What they have found out in Africa is that, uh, you know, they say an elephant never forgets. Well, one thing they learn apparently very, very young is what happens when you snort a bee up your trunk. They do not like the sound of bees buzzing. If they rub up against the wrong tree and it disturbs a bee's nest, elephants will literally run in the opposite direction. And so people in Africa have discovered that they can take the traditional log hive or the top bar hives and they hang them up on wires in a fence line around their farm. And each one of these hives is connected to the next one with a thin wire. And so as an elephant walks through, they hit that wire and it shakes the hives on either side, which disturbs those African bees and they come buzzing out and the elephant says, I'm gonna go that way. And the elephants quickly learn to recognize these wooden boxes that are painted bright colors and they stay away from the farms completely. And so the farmers there get protection from the marauding elephants, they get better pollination from the bees, and they also have a honey crop. So 
It's uh, just one more way that bees make the world a better place for everybody, including the elephants who don't get killed.